Countess Elizabeth Bathory de Exed, or Elizabeth Bathory for short, was a noblewoman in the Kingdom of Hungary who lived from 1560 until she died in 1614. But today, she is better known as a serial killer who has tortured and killed girls. It is said, from 1590 to 1610, victims of her atrocities reached about 650 people, making Guinness World Records label her as the most prolific female murderer in history. She is even said to often drink and bathe in the blood of her victims to maintain her youthful appearance. For the same reason, several metal bands created songs inspired by the bloodbath legend. But is all that true, or is it just an exaggerated myth? Did Elizabeth Bathory really ever kill, even if it was just one person? To find out, let's digest more about who Elizabeth Bathory really is, starting from her background. Elizabeth Bathory was born in Nierbader, Hungary, in 1560 or 1561. It is not known exactly when she was born because at that time, written historical records were not as detailed and comprehensive as today. Her father was Baron George VI Bathory, brother of the highest official in Hungary, the Voivode of Transylvania, Andrew Bonaventure Bathory. Her mother also came from noble circles. Her name was Anna Bathory, and she was the sister of the King of Poland at that time. With her family status and wealth, it's no wonder Elizabeth can get the best education, which is only a dream for the common people. Just imagine, at her young age, she could get the opportunity to learn Latin, Hungarian, German, and Greek at school. In addition, her parents also raised her in a very religious home environment. But that doesn't mean life is going perfectly for Elizabeth. It is noteworthy that her parents were still related by blood, while not uncommon for nobles in those days. And the inbreeding caused some health problems for little Elizabeth. One of them is a severe seizure caused by epilepsy. And that's what breeds wild speculation about her cruelty in the future. One theory is that Elizabeth tried to treat her epilepsy by smearing her lips with the blood of people who don't have epilepsy, which caused her to always be thirsty for blood. Another theory is that Elizabeth's parents and family always trained her to be cruel to commoners. And as if that wasn't enough, they also taught her about black magic and the worship of demons. But it seems like a fantastic myth because no solid evidence supports the stories. In fact, little is known about Elizabeth's childhood. One thing was for sure when she was 10 years old, Elizabeth was engaged to Ferenc Nadasti, the son of another noble couple. Their engagement wasn't because they loved each other, though. It was aimed more at political reasons. In 1570, Elizabeth and Ferenc Nadasti were married in a wedding ceremony attended by more than 4,500 guests. At that time, Elizabeth was only 15 years old, while Nadasti was four years older than her. Interestingly, even though Nadasti is the heir to one of the area's wealthiest and most influential families, his family's social standing is still lower than Elizabeth, so that's why Elizabeth still uses the last name Bathory instead of changing her last name with her husband's surname. Even so, Nadasti could still give Elizabeth a wedding gift, namely a castle called Seasedged, located in the Carpathian mountain range, and that's where she will live the rest of her life. A few years after their marriage, in 1578 to be precise, Nadasti was appointed the main commander of the Hungarian army against the Ottoman Empire. The appointment practically forced him to leave the task of managing his vast estate and local population to Elizabeth. And it's not a big problem for her. She proved to be an accomplished administrator, and everything went well under her control. It is said that she also often takes care of the poor who are sick and gives them advice. But as time passed, people began to hear rumors that Elizabeth was torturing her maids and young women. The rumor then spread widely, even throughout the kingdom until Nadasti died in 1604 at the age of 48, just 29 years after he married Elizabeth. At this point, the rumors were even starting to worry the authorities. But it wasn't until 1610 that the then King of Hungary, Matthias II, ordered the Palatine of Hungary, Gyorgy Thurzo, a high-ranking official in charge of judicial matters, to investigate the rumors. Then between March and July 1610, with his two notaries, Andrus Karistri and Moses Cesaraki, Thurzo began collecting evidence and interviewing 52 witnesses, 34 of whom were Elizabeth's servants. And this is what they found out from their investigation. 
According to testimony from witnesses, Elizabeth began her heinous act in 1590, in which she lured poor young women to Seasedge Castle, promising to give them jobs as servants. But what really happened was that behind the closed castle, she and some of her trusted servants tortured and brutally killed the poor women using various methods. She burned the victims with tongs and hot irons, or sometimes poured ice water on them until they froze. On other occasions, she beat them to death or starved them until they could not move. Witnesses also said she had bitten off the women's faces and chests before mutilating them. In addition, she often put needles in the nails of the victims or smeared their naked bodies with honey so that the ants and bees stung them. And the most terrible thing is that girls as young as 10 are also Elizabeth's victims. As time went on, however, Elizabeth seemed less than content with simply torturing and killing common girls or young women. Hence, since the death of her husband, she began to slaughter the daughters of the nobles who were sent to Seasedge Castle to study. Not only that, but she also kidnapped local girls around the castle. By 1610, many noble daughters were said to never return after they entered the castle. And maybe that's why the king ordered Thurzo to investigate Elizabeth. Because, at that time, the safety of the nobles was far more important than the death of the servants or the daughters of the peasants. Elizabeth and her four servants were finally arrested in her castle in December 1610. After Thurzo heard the accusations against Elizabeth, he finally charged her with the murder of 80 girls. But even so, one of the witnesses, who was her servant, claimed that she had seen Elizabeth's diary, in which she wrote a list of victims, which totaled around 650. But the diary was never found until now. Then, Elizabeth's servants who assisted her in her cruel act were executed after the trial. They were found guilty of practicing witchcraft and sentenced to death by burning at stake. Indeed, in the late 1500 and early 1600, witchcraft was on the rise. Elizabeth is said to have received instructions on witchcraft from her loyal servant, Anna Darvilia, or known as Darvulia, who was also executed for her role. Elizabeth herself has been freed from trial and the death penalty thanks to her status as a noble. She was only put under house arrest, where she had to live the rest of her life in isolation in her room, surrounded by brick walls. She died in her sleep in 1614, four years after she received her sentence, at the age of 54. However, was Elizabeth Bathory really as evil as described in the testimony of witnesses? Did she really like to bathe in the blood of her victims to maintain her youthful beauty? The answer to the first question is quite complicated. But to the second question, the answer is probably no. It's just a legend, a myth. In fact, there is not a single testimony that says she ever bathed in anyone's blood. Even though when Thurzo carried out his investigation, some people had already called her a cannibal and even claimed that they had seen her having intercourse with the devil. The story about the bloodbath only appeared for the first time in 1729, a century after Elizabeth's death. It was a scholar named Laszlo Taroxi who wrote it in his Tragica Historia. Some historians even argue that Elizabeth was the victim of an economic and political conspiracy, possibly due to her wealth and vast land holdings. So in this context, the person who deserves to be highlighted is none other than King Matthias II, who ordered Thurzo to investigate Elizabeth. It turned out that the king owed Elizabeth's husband a lot over the years. Then after Nat Esty died, he continued to pile up his debts to Elizabeth without any intention of paying them off. So her arrest and the king's refusal to let Elizabeth defend herself in court could be due to the debt. Some even mentioned that Elizabeth's family considered the debt paid off in exchange for the king allowing her to be put under house arrest instead of executed. Even the court's validity of the four loyal servants still needs to be questioned because at that time, people doubted the validity of the witnesses' testimonies. Many witnesses could not provide solid evidence of what they accused Elizabeth of and claimed they heard from someone else. Some even suspect that witnesses testify under duress. But then again, while all these theories make sense, they are not backed up by historical evidence. Whereas in reality, people did find a lot of corpses and girls dying in the castle. It's just to what extent is the truth of the claims that describe Elizabeth as a sadistic killer. There are several possibilities regarding Elizabeth Bathory. First, she is a cold-blooded killer who has killed many innocent girls cruelly. 
Second, she kills her servants and girls, but not as brutally as in the story. Third, she is just a poor woman slandered by people who want to control her property and land. So, what do you think of Elizabeth Bathory? Let us know what you think in the comment sections.